co-founder of Decoin. We have Matt with us. Matt. Hi, hey, I'm Matt, Matt co-founder of Decoin and Ledgerly. Happy to be here. All right, well, let's get to it. First question. Well, I mean, how did you start off here in the first place? Like, what made you guys get here? Like, what? how did the concept of Decoin even, you know, boom? How did Decoin start or the concept came um, we, well, I, from a personal viewpoint, from like, you know, my, like a first person shooter type of view, um, I started going, I left um, Wall Street and that whole, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but that whole ecosystem is either, it's like, um, I don't know, Vietnamese food. You either really, really like it or you really, really don't. So I didn't. I came down here because uh, my dad got sick, so I moved from New York to Florida and got bored and started going to the foreclosure auction, so past time, and linked up with Charles again, kind of by chance, and then we started going to the auction together sometimes, purchasing together sometimes, you know, leveraging each other to get the other person a better deal. And we started noticing things like um, certain groups of people were getting hurt, taken advantage of, right? Like, unfortunately um, for them, our, uh, it's not just television, um, but I'll just use TV as an example. The TV makes real estate investing look really easy, right? You won't even get dirty flipping a house on TV. And they don't actually accurately portray the risks and pitfalls and balls. So we watched a lot of people get hurt. And we, you want to just grab each one of them and save them. Like, no, don't. Like, I'm sorry you lost all your money. That sucks. But stick it out. Real estate is the safest form of investment. It's the most profitable. Like, this is where you want to be. You don't want some stockbroker getting richer than you, trading your retirement. Like, this is where you need to be. And then that was, uh, you know, the um, market opportunity realization, like real estate, a f phenomenal investment vehicle. It is the safest investment vehicle. And, um, Charles is actually a little bit better at building rent, at, uh, at building flips. Really? Right, and laying them out. Like, I like rental portfolios. Okay. They're like, um, they're like bonds there. Like the like the residual everything like you can build something and then it stays built for a very long time he, he likes building things and then when he's out of things to build he wants to build another thing right? he's a tinker so with or the profit margins on or the, the returns on flips are very 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 high and very you know soon i can i think his average is 21 percent across like track record of like a hundred and something flips good. yeah average of 20 and a flip takes in three months i like rental portfolios so you can because they're risk averse so they make great um like retirement style investment vehicles which is very close to what i was doing so i was in my comfort zone nothing would leave this office that didn't do 17 percent a year if it was less than you would get yelled at by me uh, and it wouldn't it wouldn't leave and you would go back to your office and stay till you found them a property that would the highest performing hedge fund I, this is this might be a little old 2017 is when i read this and then you know uh, saw the award roku's fund a hedge fund in london um, broke records in 2017 as the highest performing general fund ever, right? It did 13%. That's the best. <laughs> that broke Wall Street records, 13%. Real estate is a better, safer place to be, but consumers have no access to it. Like if I wanted to ask stock questions or bond questions, I can walk into a Charles Schwab, talk to a licensed person that doesn't have an agenda that'll stop me from doing dumb shit. I could walk in there and be like, hey, I want to sell all of this stock and I want to buy this. And that guy would be like, 
no, that's a terrible idea. You should not do that. Right. With real estate, they don't have that. Right. All right. There is not a, an advocacy organization right, that also is like an, a vehicle for them to invest. Like they can't. There isn't anything that they can that will help them invest, but also protect them. They can't like walk into a real estate brokerage, like so just Century Twenty One, and be like, "I'm thinking of buying," you know this house as an investment property. The real estate agent's only making a commission. He's, he's like, yes, that's a fantastic idea. We should go buy that right now, right? Right. So there wasn't anybody kind of protecting them or allowing them to uh, to use real estate like they use other investment vehicles. So Charles and I re- recognized that opportunity and we realized we only wanted to take commission from buyers, right? So we would, if you're a, our client, right? When you sold your properties, we wouldn't take any commission. We would do all the work for free because we knew if you made money, A, you tell everybody you knew, and that's great for us. Right. But B, you would want to do it again. You would buy another property. And in that situation, the seller of the property, who is not a client of ours, that's who's paying our paycheck. That's who's, that was paying the commission. So we we did very, very, very well. It exploded. And then we had the uh, what you were talking about, like uh, that moment where we created it um we got a very sad realization like we could do this for the rest of our life every single day forever and maybe we'd have all of florida not you know only doing commission on one side reducing commission right maybe we'd have the southeast or maybe the east coast right but there's no way we could actually change nationwide how the real estate system works is impossible right we could literally work till we die and not fix it and then we watched filecoin right because we first we we were inspired by bitcoin because it gets around this centralized organization that feels that it has the right to six percent of the most valuable thing you own right and we watched these icos come out of nowhere um come up with a a game-changing idea, something that's going to change the world. And then the community just got behind them and catapulted them into reality. Somebody came up with a good idea and the community made it a reality. Right. Right? That's something that never has been done before. You'd have to go to venture capital funds. They would take big chunks of your company and equity, and then they'd end up selling your company to Zillow because, you know, they kept purchasing equity until they had, a you know, a enough board seats we'd never seen anything like that before to give you an idea like our competition zillow spends 152 million dollars every 60 days every two months right 150 million dollars every two months in marketing even if somebody did come up with a game changer a I, I don't I don't want to say that we did. I don't want I don't want to say that it, it is a game changer. We are working every day to make sure it is, but I know I'm not one of those people that say like, yeah, we already did. We built it. So I've changed the world. Right, um right. It, it takes hard work every day and it's it's a living organism that you have to put work in every single day. So it's not changed yet, but we're working really hard and it's we're not the ones that did the most heavy lifting. The community that did. The com- with the crypto community, if you build something and you bring it to people, this community will make sure it, it becomes a reality. We are the community of doers, right. right? We're not the community of takers. We're not like, oh, well, you know, I see this guy's got a great business idea, a great platform. Let me try and go build the same thing and throw a different name on it. We're the community that gets behind them and whether it's with our capital, whether it's with our, you know, word of mouth, promotion, um, fanaticism, however a person contributes, they make sure that the token, the solution, the product becomes a reality and makes the change that they want to see. Our community takes ownership of things, right? Like, I don't know if you, I I can't name a product that I get behind, 
right? Like, there's nothing in my cupboard <laughs> or right. in my refrigerator that I go make a point of telling everybody about, right? Or I, you know, promote or like, especially with protocols. Right. Like, that's crazy. Not only can I promote this thing that I love, I can actually build onto it and make it better, right? I can't name anything else I know of that I can get behind like I can get behind blockchain companies and solutions. Like our community gives everything, everything they have. They give their time, their capital, right? Their influence, if they're an influencer, right? Their connections, their network. We are a community of givers uh, and doers. We give everything we have for other people's ideas and we will make sure they become a success. It's, it's, it's really awesome. I think that's We're what I love. <laughs> that's good. I think that's one of the things that I that I love, it, even even just in general about the you know crypto community and and what they do and, and how people, you know, kind of like, no, <laughs> definitely not. But you know, it's it's that's important. That, that I feel like a lot of businesses and a lot of people who have ideas they they just get you know sold off to these big companies and. and it just becomes unrealistic. Like people that want to get into acting, they think they have to sell their soul and sell their body yeah. into, you know, and, yeah. and you don't have to do that. Well, if they do, right? if they want to use the existing business model. Right, right, right. Yeah. And it's, it's like, it's really interesting because you guys are, are one of the, you know, disruptors, like you said, um, you know, kind of like, kind of like Netflix and Uber, they disrupted the original taxi industry and the original, you know, cable was getting out of control prices industry. And, and you guys, you know, you can disrupt that six percent eight percent whatever this real towards charging you know kind of industry where because it's it's like you're right it's huge people are always going to need a place to live they're always going to need a place to buy always gonna need a place to shop like it's it's property and it's huge and a lot of people don't understand that world and it's it's really cool that you guys are stepping into that world and also embedding into new technology into blockchain technology um how did you guys necessarily pick blockchain over kind of having a traditional innovation kind of thing um, because of the roadblocks that were in place. Um, I don't know if Charles talked about the NAR at all, National Association of Realtors. No. Didn't. Not it. That's his favorite soapbox. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. Um, there's a lot in there. <laughs> there is a lot of real estate is very centralized. Right? What made us pick blockchain is we've watched a very similar entity is the banking industry. Yeah. Right? And we watch Bitcoin circumvent right go around banks make them irrelevant overnight giving all the power back to the people what bitcoin did for banks was beautiful there's no more single person in control of my money that's going to charge me you know 10 percent or actually well uh what's the name western union has gotten to a bunch of hot water, but again, they didn't get in trouble. Right. Nobody got arrested. They didn't right. get any charges. They didn't have to pay any fines. It just they looked bad because they were they, they charged uh, migrant workers yeah, in deal. California twenty percent yeah, twenty yeah, percent of their money to send that yeah. back. That's crazy. Yeah. So we watched that, and we're and our organization is very similar. There is an organization that masquerades itself as a consumer advocacy organization. Right. Uh, the term realtor is a term that's coined by the National Association of Realtors. They per- they say that they're a consumer protection agency and, a, you know, they protect consumers and make real estate agents be ethical and pass a standard and a code. These people are the same people that have been brought up on charges, right, from the Department of Justice three times for price fixing, oh. right? So this association that you have to be a part of, right? right? If you're not, you don't get access to MLS. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you don't get to actually be a real estate agent, right? right? They're a lobbying organization. The wow. reason that there's this, this 6% has stuck around this long, the reason there's 50 different states, 50 different real estate licenses, right? 50 different sets of real estate laws. It's not an accident. Uh, there's four, uh, almost five million transactions a year mm-hmm. uh, in the US, and there's a million and a half real estate agents. That means at, on average, you're getting four transactions. 
a year, a real estate agent on average, because there's so many of them, uh, gets four a year. If you're getting four deals a year, you've got skinny kids. <laughs> you, you, you send, somebody is very hungry at your house, right? And the people that are the organization that's supposed to protect the real estate agents, they don't care because they get twelve hundred to fifteen hundred dollars every year from each of them. Mandatory. Oh. Mandatory. So what this consumer advocacy organization really is is a billion dollar a year. Right? Uh, lobbying organization. Right. You're are you a homeowner? You're gonna be. Again, are yeah. you? Awesome. Hopefully it's gonna be an investment property, right? Right, yeah. Yes, okay, cool. Um you can't sell your own house now. Really? You can try. You can put a sign out in the front of your yard that says for sale, right? But 96% of Americans found their home on Zillow or Trulia and the National Association of Realtors, who, by the way, gets paid from Zillow, right? And Trulia for the MLS information, mm -hmm. that information that agents put in. Mm -hmm. Agents don't get any of that money. Agents do the work for free. Do the work for free. Actually, no, they pay a thousand dollars a year. Too, yeah. And then the NAR takes that money and sells. So the NAR has all the house for sale information, all the listings, right? So they leverage, right? And well, I don't know if I can swear. But they they beat the shit out of Zillow until Zillow changed their terms and conditions six months ago, very quietly where unless you're a licensed realtor, so that a real estate license is not the same as being a realtor. A realtor is a term that they coined, right? Mm -hmm. For being a, a member of their union. It's a little fascist to me. It's really, <laughs> it, it reminds me of, you know, it's very similar to what some dude with a mustache did, but I'm not gonna make that <laughs> parallel, right? Unless, so you can have a real estate license and not be a realtor because you didn't give these people money yet. Right, and when you do, you get this term realtor that you can use. Mm -hmm. The Zillow terms and conditions have been changed to where only a person that's paid for, that has a license and has paid the NAR money and get, is a realtor, quote unquote, can list a property on Zillow. So, really? and that is the place where 96% of Americans, existing homeowners and new homeowners, right, find their home. 96%. So yeah, you can sell your house yourself. You can try. You can put a sign in front of your yard. And that sign could say for sale, for rent. Doesn't matter. For free. Right? But you can't actually sell it. Because 96% of Americans can't find it. Right. Because you're not allowed to put it, you know, on the internet. Basically, I don't mean the internet. Yes, you could put it on Craigslist. You could list your house for sale on Craigslist. But Zillow... Trulia, Realtor.com, that's all one company. It's called Reology, all right? No, sorry, that's uh, uh, Zillow Group. Um, all the real estate offices are another example of that scenario. Right? Century 21, Remax, Caldwell Banker, Sotheby's, uh, some other one I'm forgetting, but literally every real estate office that a person, the consumer is, mm -hmm. If I were to ask you, what's the name of a real, a real, estate, a real estate agent company? What would you tell me? Caldwell uh, Banker, Century 21, yeah, Remax. Yeah. Yeah. You know that's all the same company. What do you mean by that? It is the same company. It's the same company. It's all rheology. Right? Really? You just have different trademarks. And so the food industry did that, did it years ago. Right? They, it's, it's lying to consumers mm -hmm. is what it is, but they realized that Okay, because what happens in a in a, a gold rush, a boom, is that everyone goes out there and everyone starts a business, everyone starts making money. Right. Right. And then slowly things start consolidating. One guy makes more money than this guy, then he goes and buys that guy. Now right. he's really big. And then he goes and buys and buys, buys and buys yeah. until there's one person left. Right. And usually when that happens, the government steps in. Right. So in, that happened to Standard Oil, right? So you have the Rockefellers and right. uh, the Vanderbilts, right? That's... You know, they broke up Standard Oil into Mobile Exxon, right. right? Bell Telephone Company, right? They had to break that up into like Southern Bell, which is AT&T. They, they break up monopolies, 
Right. So what companies started doing is realizing like, hey, we better keep it. We own everything. We better keep it quiet. Right. We don't want to be too loud because then they're going to break us up like they did all those other guys. So what they do is they start other brands. Right. Oh. When you go down the grocery aisle, I'm not joking, 80 percent of what you see in each aisle is, I mean, 90% is the same company. They create different brands. It's all the same companies. Mm. And they give consumers the illusion of choice, right? They want you to think that you have a choice because then you felt that you've shopped around. Mm. 